1979, two bishops named Callistos and Anthony broke away from the Greek Old Calendar Church, which was under Archbishop Oxentius, and consecrated eight new bishops, one of whom was Kipron Kutsumbas. When this uncanonical event came to the attention of Archbishop Oxentius, he deposed Anthony and Callistos. The Senate of Archbishop Oxentius passed two resolutions condemning these secret consecrations. The minutes of the second resolution specify that not only were Callistos and Anthony deposed, but so also were Cyprian and the seven bishops. It says the consecrations are invalid and that the people were not to have any communion with the deposed bishops. Three of the bishops who were uncanonically consecrated, Maximus, Germanos, and Callinicus, returned to the Greek Old Calendar Church, but Cyprian continued in his tragic schism and remained in it to his death in 2013. The entire Senate of Metropolitan Cyprian of Philae was built on a violation of the canons of the Orthodox Church. Cyprian was deposed in 1979 by the Senate of Archbishop Oxentius, and again in 1986 by Archbishop Chrysostom Cusis. Historically, Cyprian's Senate has given communion to new calendarists in violation of the Greek Old Calendar Church Protocols 13, which was issued in 1950, and 1191 issued in 1974. As stated above, Cyprian's Senate was built on a violation of the canons of the Church. Anything done contrary to the canons is invalid. In his commentary on Apostolic Canon 30, St. Nicodemus the Hagiarite states, the canons ordain that a senate of living bishops should defrock priests or excommunicate or anathematize laymen when they transgress the canons. The Serbian canonist, Bishop Nicodem, states, Every episcopal act is invalid and nothing and no one is required to heed it if it is contrary to the canons, if it contains something that the canons do not include, if it does not express whatever the local senates have determined and have been proclaimed as institutions, and lastly, if they are in opposition to civil laws that are not contrary to the spirit of the church. St. Dosithios, Patriarch of Jerusalem. Those things that are not in agreement with the canons are not only powerless, but are also disregarded and stripped of all good, as impious and abominable. St. Theodore the Studite. No authority has been given to hierarchs to commit any violation of any canon whatsoever, but rather only to follow as much as has already been said and to correctly follow the previous. It is therefore impossible, O Master, for our Orthodox Church and any other to act contrary to the set laws and canons. Otherwise, if this be allowed, the gospel is empty and the canons in vain, and everyone during his time of being a bishop, allowing himself and those with him to act as he wills, let him become a new evangelist, another apostle, and another lawmaker. No, not at all. We have a command from the very apostle himself that says, Whoever dogmatizes or orders you to do something that is against that which we have received, against that which the canons of the varied, in time holy, general, and local synods, let us not accept him nor consider him orthodox. And I avoid saying the severe word that the apostle said, that is, let him be anathema. St. Gregory the Great For this we lay down as a rule that whosoever knows not how to obey the holy canons, neither is he worthy to minister or receive the communion at the holy altars. Cyprian started a schism. What do the saints teach us about schism? Here are a few examples. St. Ignatius of Antioch. Make no mistake, brethren, no one who follows another into schism will inherit the kingdom of God. No one who follows heretical doctrines is on the side of the passion. St. John Chrysostom writes, I do say and affirm that schism is just as terrible and evil as heresy. St. John Chrysostom. I say this for those who indiscriminately go to all churches, both to ours and to those of the schismatics. If they teach differently than we do, then for that very reason, of course, one ought not to go to them. But if they teach the very same as we do, then all the more cause why one ought not to go to them. For here is the sin of lust for authority. St. Basil the Great said, Because their separation is initiated through schisms, those who have separated themselves from the church no longer have in themselves the grace of the Holy Spirit, nor could they any longer confer on others that grace of the Holy Spirit from which they themselves had fallen away. St. Optatus Now by the commandments of God, three things are, amongst others, forbidden by him. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not worship strange gods, and summing up the commandments, Thou shalt not commit schism.